Charles pitching down range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the iSpace Series 1 Lunar Lander. During ascent, we tilt the engines, which we call gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. And that's what we call a gravity turn. We are still Power going... Telemetry is nominal. We are still going up, but we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. The rocket typically needs to go 17,000... supersonic. Great call outs there. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get Max into Q. orbit. And we just heard a call out for Max Q. That is maximum dynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. Now that we're past the period of Max Q or maximum dynamic pressure, Impact we do. Engine chill. We do have five events coming up in quick succession. That'll be Miko, stage separation, stage one flip, SES one, and then the boost back burn on the first stage will begin. Again, Miko is where all nine of those engines that you see lit up on your screen, that those will shut down. That helps slow the stage down in preparation for stage separation. Then the first stage will do a flip in order to make its way back to its landing zone today on land, followed by SES-1 or second stage engine start one on the second stage. That's where the MVAC engine will ignite. And then the boost back burn will also begin on the first stage. Those events are coming up here in just a few seconds. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one, boost back startup. Some really cool views there. We just had Miko stage separation. You could see the stage one flipping in the background of the MVAC view and an awesome view of the first stage boost back burn there. Awesome, awesome views. Again, that was Miko stage separation, stage one flip, SES one, that's the MVAC engine igniting there you can see that on your right hand screen. Stage one is currently in its boost back burn. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you can see on the right hand screen, the fairing halves have deployed from the second stage as well. These fairing halves have completed their fourth and fifth flight and will be recovered when they return back down to earth on our recovery vessel, Bob. Stage one boost back shut down. And as you saw on your left hand screen, the engine has shut down on the first stage. That concludes the boost back burn for stage one. And an awesome view here. This is from our Falcon 9 second stage looking at our MVAC engine in its first burn at the moment. T plus four minutes into today's mission. We are in the first of two planned MVAC burns before payload deployment. At T plus six minutes and 33 seconds, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. That burn will last about 20 seconds. Now the entry burn is where we relight three M1D engines, starting with the center E9 engine, then followed shortly afterwards by the E1 and E5 engines. Now that slows the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. Now we need to slow the stage down in order to reduce re-entry forces and that helps us with recovery and reuse of the first stage. Again, what you're seeing on your screen is a view of the MVAC engine on the second stage. So far looking like it's on a nominal trajectory. Now reusability is key to lowering the cost. He calls on nominal trajectory. Great call outs there. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. 
The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission will perform this entry burn for the fifth time, previously having supported SES-22 and three Starlink missions. Again, that entry burn will be coming up in just about a minute from now, around the T plus six minute and 33 second mark. During that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, and we are still moving rapidly. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, which we also call the rocket's plume, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. Now that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. about 30 seconds away from the entry burn on the first stage. Again, you're seeing a view of the second stage MVAC engine on your screen. Stage one, entry burn startup. And there now on your left hand screen is the first stage. We did hear the call out and also can see those engines lighting up the screen. Very bright there. This burn lasts about 20 seconds. Again, it's three of nine M1D engines reigniting. Stage one, entry burn shut down. Stage one, FTS is saved. And as you saw, the engines have shut down. That concludes the entry burn for the first stage. Next up in just about 30 seconds will be the landing burn for the first stage. That's a single engine burn, the center E9 engine. Each engine is optimized for sea level. Startup terminal guidance. And it has about 190,000 pounds of thrust. So that single engine is just enough thrust to enable the first stage vehicle to touch down on its landing zone. Today will be Stage landing. One transonic. It will be landing zone two or LZ2 that we will be attempting to land on today. And just shortly after the landing burn Stage begins. Stage one landing burn. As we just saw and heard, the Stage One I'm vehicle landing burn has begun. We also heard the shutdown of the second stage engine, but stage let's watch two, yes, as Falcon 9 touches down for landing with this incredible view here. Terminal orbit insertion. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Really awesome views there. As you can see, Falcon 9 has touched down on landing zone two. That is our 155th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Now we also had Seco 1 or second stage engine cutoff one. Uh, and that is of that MVEC engine that you can see there shut down. But the mission is not over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time at T plus 40 minutes. We will not have ground station coverage for SES-2 and SECO-2, so we'll come back to confirm a successful burn right before payload deploy at the T plus 47 minute mark. And we're just a few seconds away from payload deploy. And we might not have ground station coverage during deployment, so we may have to wait for confirmation here. iSpace M1 payload deploy confirmed. And great news, as you can see on your screen, the iSpace Series 1 lunar lander is now on its way towards the moon. Great view there. Our mission isn't over yet. As mentioned earlier in the webcast, we do have a ride share on today's mission. Lunar flashlight will deploy around T plus 53 minutes. So sit back, enjoy the views, and we'll see you back here in another five minutes. 
We are now coming up on the final milestone for today's launch, the deployment of Lunar Flashlight. Managed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, operated by Georgia Tech, and integrated by Maverick Space Systems, Lunar Flashlight will be finding and mapping water on the moon, which will help enable humans to permanently work and live on the surface of the moon. Using a new green propulsion technology and four compact lasers, Lunar Flashlight will peer into permanently shadowed craters and areas of the moon that never see sunlight. Now, deployment of lunar flashlight should occur in about 10 seconds or so. Uh, and as a reminder, we may not have views of this deployment due to the placement of the payload on our camera and our cameras, but we'll listen in and keep an eye out to see if we can see it drift off in the distance. And in your view there, you can actually see the iSpace Series 1 lunar lander off in the distance there. Lunar flashlight separation confirmed. And we just heard that call out that we did have deployment of the lunar flashlight. Again, off in the distance is the Series 1 lunar lander there. And again, we may not see the lunar flashlight, but we did hear the confirmation of payload deploy. So lunar flashlight is now on its journey to find water at the south pole of the moon. And with successful deployment of Lunar Flashlight, that will end our webcast coverage for this mission. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer iSpace for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. And thanks to all of you, our viewers, for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you again soon.